Ooh. All right, it has been a little while, but um, I just wanted to make this really quickly, mostly for my partner in crime, Beric, but I'm also going to explain um, a lot of how <clears throat> Unreal Engine Paper 2D handles um, tile sets and tile maps, so I think it might be useful to some other people, so I guess I'll just put it out into the world. But um, the context here is that um, we're trying to make a nice little top-down isometric resource manager sort of game. Um, the simplest part of which is having an isometric map that you can click on and change tiles around and things. So um, I suppose briefly here's how Unreal Engine's workflow for that generally is. So you get a sprite sheet I have pulled this one just off of um, the internet, just as a prototype to test with. Um, contains a bunch of tiles. Um, all of these steps, they don't have to be isometric tiles, obviously, and in fact, most of the bugs and issues that I'll be going over don't really affect standard orthographic tiles. But So this is a texture containing some 64 by 32 pixel tiles. Um, you can go into project settings and down in paper 2D adjust some um, opacity and general like storage settings and then um, you can go here and apply those settings to the texture um, but once you have that you can export those textures to a tile set and you set the size of the tiles. In this case, I've told it to be 64 by 64. Really, these small isometric ones are 64 by 32, um, but the, the taller ones work better as a 64 by 64 square tile. It means you get a little bit of overdraw um, because it overlaps the top half of this tile, but um, it makes it a little easier just, just for prototyping at least. Um, this has all kinds of features, like if your tile set has a border around the outside or spacing between the tiles, that sort of thing. Um, and you, in here, you can also specify collision per tile. Now, Unreal Engine doesn't really do two-dimensional collision, not very well anyway. There's an experimental 2D physics engine, but it's missing a lot of features that at least I need. So, the way it does it is by creating a 2D sort of collision box or mesh, and then just sort of extruding it a little bit into the third dimension. Um, I'll show you how that works here. There's a couple ways to do it. One is that you can customize the collision for every tile in the tile set. Um, I can go and I can add a box, and I can move the vertices around individually um, until I get it just right. You can do the same with a polygon, which is just an arbitrary number of vertices. Uh, more vertices, less performance, but um, no big deal. And then a circle. Pretty easy. Um, you can also have it calculate the collision on the fly. Um, the default, not default, but the simplest way to do this is the source bounding box method, which just says if it's a 64 by 64 tile, then the collision is a 64 by 64 box. Simple as that. Um, there's the type mounting box, which is the same thing. It draws a rectangle, but it tries to shrink it in as much as possible um, until it <coughs> excuse me, stops hitting transparency. So this would be especially useful for little props like these. Um, it would make a nice tight bounding box around it. You can also do shrink wrap, which will, um, to a certain level of detail, um, try to wrap it as closely as possible in a polygon. And this will be really good for something highly detailed like this, where maybe when I click this tile in between the branches, I wanted to select whatever's behind it. Well, you need a really high detailed mesh for that, and high detail shrink wrap might go around the outside like this. Um, diced is pretty similar, but it actually just um, draws a bunch of points around the outside and then connects them. So uh, you can think of it almost like a low-resolution shrink wrap, where 
it might not go inside these crevices, but it'll get the general shape, which is almost always going to be good enough. So that's how the collision is done. Um, the purpose of these tiles in the tile set is to be put into a tile map. Um, here is a little test. So when you pull it up, it'll be blank. Um, in setup here, you can specify the number of tiles in width and height, um, and then the resolution of the tiles. Um, the size, so the number of, these are 64 pixel wide tiles, and I've told it that each one of those pixels is one unit in Unreal Engine. So changing this will just scale the world up and down. Separation per layer. Tile maps are actually a bunch of these 2D layers stacked on top of each other, and that's how you get um, extra detail into the level. So you might have a layer for the ground, a layer for this fake terrain. This map is totally broken right now, by the way. Um, a layer for props and decals, that kind of thing. And you can add them in here and, and hide some layers and show others. Projection mode, um, currently it's set to orthographic, but these it's designed to be an isometric diamond map like this. So you can see that the first layer is just flat, second layer is this second height layer, um, as is the third layer, and then I just threw some props on top for the fourth layer. Pretty simple little demonstration. Um, isometric staggered, which is like this, and hexagonal tiles are not really intended, they're not fully supported yet. This entire thing is an early access build, so. Um, and I've been running into some bugs with it, which I'll show you in a second. But you can also specify the separation, so we can separate each tile, put a little bit of space in between. Um, collision thickness. You remember when I was saying that the way that this handles collision is essentially by drawing the 2D collision and then just sort of extruding it a little bit into the third dimension. This is the distance that it extrudes it. And that's important because if it's too large, um, you might have the collision for the background layers poking through the foreground layers. So keeping these two values reasonable is kind of important. And then if I had 2D physics, I could select that as an option, or if, if I had it enabled in the engine anyway. Um, you can also save and load tile maps, which is pretty cool. And you can even take a tile map object and create an instance of it at runtime, which you can edit and change without affecting the original. So then you might save this, throw it into the world. Um, I'm going to move this out of the way for now. And here we are. Now, I told you that what I want is to be able to just draw a crosshair on the world so that I can prove that I can, like, select tiles. The way this is going to happen is by doing a line trace from the player controller, the camera position, to the mouse position, which is something Unreal can do really easily. Um, the issue is that collision is a little wonky on this sort of thing. This is just a little quickly modified version of the um, um, the top-down template that Unreal Engine ships with. Um, <clears throat> so on regular 3D objects, this works fine. And in fact, if there was a sphere or something, this um, decal of a crosshair, the white circles will be drawn um, sort of over the surface of it, which is pretty cool. I've also just enabled the mouse cursor as this um, cross, just so that I can see. Um, so I want it to do this, but on our isometric map. And you can see that sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Um, this is currently a little broken because of things I've done, but this is where the biggest problem I've had is, is that despite being quote-unquote supported, isometric maps have strange properties with collision. Anything to the left of a certain point fails to register collision traces. This isn't just um, drawing at the wrong layer, um, it just does not, not register collision on tiles more than like a tile and a half to the left of this center point. 
or on the top half of the topmost tile. Um, I've been wrestling with this for a couple days now, um, and unless I'm looking over something pretty big, I think this is just um, an, an engine bug that is part of this early access preview. Um, and especially because if I set this map to not be isometric but orthogonal, um, it immediately fixes that problem. Um, like I said, these tiles aren't registering collision because I've broken them just now, but um, it doesn't have that problem if it's not an isometric or hexagonal map. So um, for doing an isometric game, then this kind of left us with with two options. One was to do orthogonal instead of isometric. This is, after all, just going to be a prototype, um, just for game gameplay prototyping um, for an ev eventual three-dimensional VR port. But um, <clears throat> I really don't like the isometric or the orthogonal art style. I don't know. That's just personal preference. And these tile maps also have some other limitations, like um, I might want some animated water. And you can't you can't add flipbook um, flipbooks of sprites to a tile set uh, or a tile map for that matter. Um, you can only draw one size of sprite in a tile set, um, which means that these like uh, three by three um, have to be drawn one at a time, which takes a bunch of extra logic. And most importantly is that any actual objects I want to be able to have essentially a city builder where I can put things down and, and they collect resources and um, you can't add those to the map, you have to just sort of fake it by creating objects and adding them on top. And there's also no really good way to index into this map and, and get things like tile coordinates and stuff. So um, I have opted to, because I don't need a very large tile map, um, it doesn't need to be very heavily optimized, I decided to kind of rewrite a lot of these features just on my own. So. Um, these are just like quick prototypes, so they're not at this point worth like <laughs> running a, a tutorial or, or sharing. Um, once I get them a little more ironed out, I'll uh, I'll share a bit more. But um, it's basically just a map blueprint, and that at runtime creates a bunch of random bases. Uh, I've got to implement a way. Um, <clears throat> It has an array of sprites. I've basically extracted all the sprites from the sprite sheets. Um, so it, it should be possible to to add in a data structure that stores the map if I wanted to load one from a file, that sort of thing. Um, most importantly is that I can make children of this base class for things like structures, roads, um, Certain like decorative objects will have different properties than landscape objects, that sort of thing. Um, and they can be added to this map. So it's not just faking it by adding it on top of the map. Um, you can actually add those objects to it. It's essentially just an array. Um, for example, if I pull it up here, um, it essentially just takes a width and height and some basic properties and, and randomly generates a bunch of tiles from that, um, setting their sprites and whatnot. But uh, So if I play it now, you'll notice that, um, well, at one, I've got about a hundred different selection crosshairs, because I'm just in the middle of prototyping some stuff, but um, the collision test works. It draws this white circle on the tiles correctly. It doesn't go behind tiles. Um, it, and you can tell that I can check what tile I'm selecting, because I can highlight it by changing its color. Um, you can add different oops, add tiles to the world. Um, since it's only on the first layer right now, this will delete the tile underneath it, but that's no big deal. Um, so what it's actually doing here is just a bunch of math behind the scenes to, to create this array um, and to determine Oops, excuse me. Um, it, it draws them, this is a little bit exaggerated of like z distance between them, it doesn't have to be that great, but um, so it draws them in the correct position. 
Um, you can put objects in here. The player has a UI and a um, an associated sort of inventory that you can increment and decrement. You can um, check into the map and see what structures are in there and, and keep track of ones that are connected to each other. It's all just a little easier to make the kind of game we are. So next up I need to um, throw in some, some placeholders for some actual structures we're going to do and, and prototype um, some elements like having um, tiles cost resources and have them increment resources when they're down in the world, that sort of thing. Um, but that's where we are at the moment. Uh, I'm going to look into methods of making isometric assets other than just drawing them. Um, since we're going to port it to VR, we could... It's possible that we could um, create 3D assets and then um, sort of get an orthographic camera to create an isometric sprite from a 3D asset, and that makes the transition like really nice and smooth. I, I, that'll be a really cool experience, like um, looking at this isometric world, and then you go in VR, and it's it's not just similar art style, but it's exactly the same, but with full 3D depth. Um, that'll be really cool. Anyway. Uh, that's what I got. I'll, I'm, I'm going to work the next, uh, over this weekend actually, the next four days I've not got a lot going on, so um, I'm looking forward to prototyping some features. I'll let you know what I get.